Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lights Out Storytime. My name is Savannah, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a tale called The Comfort Ghost. And I note that this is an absolutely true story. There was a young woman who had recently moved to a city far away from her old home and family. An exciting new job, the thrill of discovering new places and new people. And she was happy. She really was. Mostly. Okay, if she were totally honest, there were times, many times, she felt a bit lonely and homesick. A lot lonely and homesick, but she tried to lock that all away. One night, she was awakened from a heavy sleep by the sensation of the mattress sinking down as if someone were sitting on the edge of her bed. Considering she lived alone and had no pets, it's no wonder she woke up terrified, thrashing about wildly, yelling and fumbling for the nearby lamp only to find herself entirely alone in the apartment. Feeling like a fool, she muttered to herself, just a dream, go back to sleep. Settling back into her pillows, her heart rate slowing down from her fight and eyes drifting closed again. By morning, she'd completely forgot about the incident, except it kept happening. Not every night, but often enough to be rather alarming, she would wake up feeling the weight of someone sitting on the edge of her bed as if watching her sleep. And sometimes whoever, whatever it was, was not content to merely watch. Sometimes, not every time, which was almost the worst part because she never knew when to expect it. She would swear she felt a hand stroking her hair. A mockery of the comfort her own mother would give her as a child when she'd wake up from a nightmare. On and on it went for weeks. The woman going back and forth between waking up, thrashing, flailing panic to find herself alone in the room or spending the whole night laying there Stiff as a board, afraid to move, afraid to even breathe. Her eyes squeezed shut tight. She'd tell herself, just open your eyes. If you open your eyes and you'll see that nothing's there, that'll be the end of it. While another part of her brain countered, yes, but what if you open them and they're is something there. The woman felt utterly trapped. She had a year long lease on the apartment and couldn't afford to break it. How would she justify such an expense? What would she tell her parents and sisters back home? Could she really confess to her loved ones she was being haunted? She who had always been seen as the practical one, not prone to flights of fancy, she knew she'd never hear the end of it. What if she did move away and whatever it was followed her? Or what if there truly was nothing there? All in her head, madness brought on by loneliness and homesickness. Finally, with nerves worn thin from lack of sleep and stress, she came to a decision. For better or worse, I need to know whether or not it's real. She elected to conduct an experiment and invited one of her sisters out for a visit, talking up how much fun they'd have, a chance for them to catch up and relax away from the husband and kids. Without too much prompting, her sister agreed to a visit. And it genuinely was a lot of fun, showing her new city off, seeing it through the eyes of another, her enthusiasm began to return. She relaxed, smiled and laughed more, standing up a bit straighter, a tilt of pride to her chin when her sister sighed, 
Moving to a completely new place where you don't know anybody, I could never do that. You're so brave. Brave, huh? Maybe she was. Just a little. At least during the day. The woman tried not to think about what the night might bring. Finally, after a leisurely dinner, the woman trying hard to draw out the evening with reminiscences about, do you remember when? Along with three hands of cards and a game of Monopoly, it couldn't be put off any longer and it was time for them to turn in. The woman would hear no argument on the matter. Oh, sis, you're my guest. Of course you can take the bed. It's no trouble at all. I'll be fine on the couch. She lay all night on that narrow, slightly lumpy couch, ears on high alert for the first sign of distress, a cry or gasp of terror. All she heard was the occasional shifting in sleep and light snores coming from the bed. Clearly, nothing was troubling her sister a bit. While she lay on the couch, no weight shifted, no hand reached for her, but she still did not rest because there was a sinking pit of dread in her stomach. It was all in your head. You're crazy, mad, nutty as peanut brittle. The next morning found her hunched in utter misery over her cup of coffee when her sister came into the kitchen whistling and humming a happy tune. There may have been a glare over the coffee cup. Did you sleep well? The woman merely grunted. This is far too much cheer for first thing in the morning. And she's still grappling with the fact that she's possibly a little bit crazy. A laugh from her sister. You never were much of a morning person. Although I have to say, I didn't think you were the sentimental type. Maybe you really did miss me over the past few months. Or that talk of old times last night made you a bit soft. At the woman's blank expression, her sister gave her a look over her own coffee cup. I mean, sitting on the edge of the bed stroking my hair? No one has done that since mom when we were kids. Less than a week later, the young woman moved out of the apartment, not a thought to expense or the questions of her family. Thankfully, she was never bothered by any more nighttime guests. She made a home and a life in her new city, learned she could be brave during the night as well as the day, and she certainly never, ever told her sister the truth about that visit. Or at least, that's the story told to me by my mother about her first shaky months in a new city called Houston. Thank you so much for your time. This has been Lights Out Storytime. Hope to see you again soon.